I have downloaded the Furat SDK Desktop Launcher. So let's install it and then open the web interface to test it and make sure it's running like it should. The installation process will look a little bit different depending on what OS you are running. I'm running Mac as you can see. So I can simply install it by dragging it into the applications folder like this. I will then click to open the installed application and I might get a message similar to this asking me if it's safe to, to open this. Uh, on Windows the pop-up message might be a little more aggressive and that is because we uh, might not have yet had sufficient amount of downloads uh, that they would deem this to be safe and from a trusted developer. But I hope uh, you will consider us safe and trusted. The next step in the installation process is to enter your Furhat API token. And you can find your Furhat API token in the developer zone in your account. If you go to my account and settings, and at the bottom of the page, you will be able to find uh, to request or create your API key and that you can then be able to, to find. So we can copy paste this one into the installer. The SDK requires Java 8 to run. So we have included that in the installation bundle. If you for some reason don't want to adopt JDK 8 to be installed, you can opt out in doing a custom installation. However, then that will require you to make sure that you have JDK 8 that is installed and discovered by your system. There are some more instructions on how to do that in our docs. But for a typical installation, you can simply press install and everything will be installed that you need to be able to run SDK. That's it, now we are all set. When we launch the SDK, the virtual fur hat head should appear. It will take a few seconds. We can place it here on the side. And let's open the web interface or the web console of the SDK that we can use to monitor and test our interactions. And in this case, let's just open it up so we can test that the SDK is running like it should. The default password is admin in lowercase letters. And here we have the web console or the web interface. We are currently in the home tab where we can, for example, choose another face for the robot. Let me bring the virtual fur hat here so we can see the face switching. We can also change to different voices that can speak with different languages. Let me select an English voice here. I think Brian is one of my favorites. Let's go with that one. And I can press the play button here to have the robot speak. Hello, I am a speaking robot. You can also enter anything that you would like the robot to say in the dialog box here. What we want to say. The next thing to try out are the different built-in gestures of the robot. So we can simply click on them to have the virtual robot play them out. We can have some fun playing around with this. But the most important thing to test is probably the speech recognizer. So I can press the button here to listen. And if I press, it will recognize everything I'm saying. So we can conclude that the speech recognizer is working absolutely fine. The last thing we can check is we can drag this purple box here to have the robot look in different directions. Typically something that's a little bit more important test when you have the physical robot. If you experience any problems with running the SDK, you can go back to the SDK launcher and you can click to view the console where you will get to see any error messages that might appear. And there's two views, one for the SDK and one uh, view for if you're running your skill. More on creating skills later on. But let's jump back to the web interface and I want to show you the dashboard where you can simulate and monitor your interactions. So this is the interaction space. This is where users of my interaction will be mapped out. To run an interaction, I need to run a skill. And I think that will be the topic for the next video, running a skill and then testing it out in the web interface.